Okay, welcome back. And uh, this next video, uh, we're going to keep building on adding all of our different GUI items to our our view here, where we can. We've been building out all these different choice boxes and combo boxes to do all kinds of great things. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in something called a list view, and sort of basically it gives the ability to put a list of items on the left, and then we'll put a button, and the user will be able to select items and put it into a text area. So you've seen probably something like this, uh, you know, for selecting um, or filtering and things like that, where you have one list and you kind of hit a filter button and you can see things come out the other side. So let's uh, let's design it. So again, first thing we're going to do, we're working on the view, and then we'll build the controller to match the view, and to uh, obviously operate the view. So in here. Um, what we have is we have a horizontal box that represents the top half of our screen right now. So if I, if you look in the hierarchy, if I collapse it all down, it's just an H box, right? If we open up the H box inside of the H box, we had vertical boxes for each of our different areas. So hopefully that's coming through okay in the video um, as I select them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another horizontal box the bottom part of our screen. So I take the horizontal box, let's put it in here, and we can stretch it. Let's see if it'll allow us to fit the parent. Oh no, we don't want that. That's gonna I'll make it too big. We'll just drag it. There we go. Wonderful. Okay, and then the idea was we're going to put in something called a list view. So drag our list view object here, we'll place it in our horizontal box, and then we're going to put in a button. And then we're going to put in um, a text area that can hold um, more text than just a text field. Okay, so if you do text area, you can see they can uh, you know, be fairly big. Now, you see our button here, this kind of looks, looks a little goofy. They're all sandwiched together. And our button is super small. And here, um, let's say, uh, uh, what do we want to put in our text there, our list here? Um, let's put in golf equipment. So cool. OK, so if I want to bring um, some spacing in here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my H box, go to the layout, and in the layout, let's change the spacing to, let's make it a little generous, make it 20. Yeah, that looks all right. And <clears throat> right now, our, uh, our button looks funny because it automatically is going to justify it to the top of our screen. So what I'm going to do is put a different type of container in here. And again, um, you know, we could put in an anchor pane in that spot uh, and then just manually put it in. But one of the neat ones, uh, if you want things perfectly centered, is called a stack pane. And every time you add an object to a stack pane, it goes right in the middle. So let's do that. Let's put stack pane here. And then we'll put, we'll drag our button into the stack pane. And now it's perfectly centered. Right, so I don't have to worry about it. And if I resize this shape, um, this is still going to be perfectly centered. So it's it's a it's a great design. Okay, go ahead, file, save. Now we've uh, we've updated our view. Although it looks like I may have to shrink this ever so slightly. Still overlapping the edges a bit. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is we have to go to our controller. So we hit save here. Let's go back to our controller. And we'll go to the top and we'll add in some, uh, some instance variables so we can control these things.
we'll add in our imports. Okay, so again, see how I have JavaFX.scene and here's JavaX.swing for this list view. Make sure you're taking the JavaFX items always. Same here, you can see text area, they have an AWT option. I want JavaFX. Okay, so in the uh, in our initialize, we need to, so if we look at it right now, if I hit save, and we were to run this, you see here's our list view, and here's our text area. And actually maybe let's add some labels, we'll add some labels to the top of these as well, so we'll remember in the future what they are. But um, we need to, uh, we need to put information into this list, this list view and create a, a way that we can you know, multi-select them, hit this button and have them pop in over here. So let's, uh, let's go back and just add in a couple of things here. So if I want to, if I want to uh, put in the labels, I'm going to add a VBox here. So hide in a VBox, move it up. And then I'll put my list view inside of it. And then I'm going to do this, move this up. We're close here. What's going on? So I'm going to put this text area inside that V box. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> there we go. Okay. I just got to do a little resizing here. So let's make these a nice size. I'm going to go to the layout, preferred width. Uh, I think let's do the mod 200. We did the other ones for 200 by 300. Let's do 250. All right. Hmm. Why is this so narrow? There we go. That looks better. Okay, so again, I multi-select the view boxes, and then I can adjust um, the preferred width so they're all they look the same. And let's put a little little arrow on here so it looks more obvious. And now that we have those uh, view boxes in here, the whole reason I did that was to add in some labels. So let's grab our labels. So now. Properties. The list view object. And you can uh, just uh, for future reference, you can actually set up a CSS so that all your labels actually just have the same font automatically. Um, that's not a bad strategy. better so make sure we hit save and we also created um, some of those instance variables so let's go and so I've selected my list view object so I can select list view here's my text area we'll come back there we go here's my text area hit save so now let's go back to our um, 
back to our controller class. Okay, now to set up uh, the list view, I'm going to go down to the initialize method because right now, when we run it, it's going to be empty. We haven't populated with anything, right? So we need to put something into our list view. So let's do that. So we're going to our initialize method here, right? So this is where we, you know, when we had uh, the choice box, we added in all the fruits or we added in all the courses. So this time, let's put in uh, some golf gear. So I'm going to say list view, and just like before, we have to get all the items. Oops. Uh, even even if the items, uh, even if there's nothing there, it returns an empty list because then you can add to the list. So I'm going to say add all. And now the other thing that we need to do is if we want to be able to multi-select, okay, so right now if we run this. Now we can see the items in there and I can select one item, but if I try to multi-select them, I'm holding down my shift key right now, you can't see that, but it only allows me to select one item at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this a bit. I'm going to say list view, hit the selection model, okay, so that's Again, it's returning a, a model of how we're allowed to um, set things. And I'm going to say, set the selection mode. And you see how it says selection mode single. So if I go, if I overwrite that, hit dot, I'm going to do multiple. So now when I run this, if I hold down my shift key, I can do multi select. And then the idea is I'm going to be able to click on this button. And put it in the text area, but we haven't we haven't created uh, a method for this button yet. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna go back up into my class here. Create a new method. So I'm going to build a little string here. I'm going to say uh, text area string. And we'll start off with it being empty. And then when you have a list view, it returns a list of things. And that behaves a lot like an array list if you're used to an array list. But it's actually what it returns is called an observable list. But it behaves much the same as an array list. So I'm going to say observable list. And then, uh, let's see, so we'll get the list view. And then we can uh, get the selection. Model. And, oops. And then we can get the selected items. So what this will do is it will return an observable list that we can, we can, uh, we can go over. And we can build up our strings. So what I'm going to say is for object. So we don't know what kind of object it is, even though in our heads we know it's a string, but the system doesn't actually know that at this point in time. So I'm going to say text area string. Right, so I'm going to append on here, 
whatever we had. So I'm going to say string dot format. And we'll do a new line character. And then I'm going to I'm going to cast whatever the item is as a string. Okay, so that kind of this forces the object because we don't know what kind of object it is, but it forces to represent itself as a string. And then at the end, I'm going to do is say text area, set the text to be text area string. We'll hit save. Again, if you don't hit save, you won't be able to go back into scene builder and uh, um, and work with this. Uh, what did I come up with text area? This dot. Ah, oh, I called it the golf text area. Okay. Okay, so let's hit save. Go back into Scene Builder. Now I can select my button. Under On Action, I can say the List View button was pushed. Hit save. Now when I come back in here, run our run our program, and let's multi-select here a few items, and I hit Select the Gear and it puts it into my text area object. So this is a nice way that you can set up some kind of filter or selection type uh, criteria in a very visual way. So I'm gonna put this into GitHub for you and then you can, uh, you can access it uh, as needed. All right, so we added list view and text area objects. It's pushing. Looks like it's good. Let's go into GitHub. And if I go into my source, you can see these were updated 19 seconds ago. If I go into my controller, scroll down. Let's see if we've got our stuff. There it is. There's our list of few items. So that's it for the video today. Have a great one.